The WoW Stratix Podcast, the official voice of a World of Warcraft Stratix fan site, wow.stratix.com. Hello and welcome to the WoW Stratix podcast, the bi-weekly podcast looking at all aspects of the world of Warcraft and the surrounding community. My name's Mioni and we have our usual cast of hosts here today. Sila, the managing editor of WoW Stratix, Metro, a fellow writer for WoW Stratix, and this week's guest, Elto, a heroic progression raider from the Guild One on Firetree US. This week we look at what it's like to be a gamer with a disadvantage. So let's kick it off with this week's topics, Mr. Metro. Alright, so today we, we got a different one. Obviously, you know, we're waiting for Warlord, so we're going to explore some more interesting topics. And today I figured would be a good chance to catch up with our good buddy Elto. Now if you don't know who Elto is, he's been a raider in our guild all the way back since ICC. And he's got a very interesting predicament. Elta, you want to go ahead and talk about the situation that you're in currently as a human being? Uh, yes, I have one arm, basically. All right, so you want to tell them a little bit about the backstory, about like, you know, just just so people understand, like it, you know, it wasn't actually like a shark accident, like everyone jokes about. Tell them everything about the the whole situation. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Um, basically, I was uh I was born with one hand, um, on my left side. Uh, basically, got a little bit past my elbow. Uh, and just, uh, lived all my life basically knowing how to do things like that. All right. So obviously, uh, you know, playing a video game with, with two hands can be a challenge. So that's going to be the focus of this podcast. We're trying to talk about gaming with a disadvantage, both from a, a physical standpoint and, and also an in-game standpoint. Um, so Elta, when, when did you start playing World of Warcraft and when did you realize that obviously having one hand put you at a disadvantage? Um, I started playing back around, like, right before, like, Vanilla, uh, right before BC came out, I was an Alliance Hunter, and, uh, I remember thinking that probably having a pet was gonna be, like, one of the easiest things to start out with, you know, um, but I really had no idea what I was getting into and how many, like, keybinds and and everything eventually, like, it stacks up to be. And, uh, what, you know, how I was gonna do this. And, yeah, I mean, one of the cool things about, you know, playing World of Warcraft, especially leveling up, is that you, you kinda like, you add another, another ability as you go. So you can put one down, practice, learn that one, then you get another one, and you can figure out where that's gonna go that best suits you. And you only learn one at a time. You know, it's a little, it's a little daunting to if you get everything at the same time and, uh, try to like figure out something all, you know, all, all at once. But, uh, yeah, eventually, uh, I kinda, kinda got it. I mean, a lot of the challenges is that, you know, Obviously, I'm missing my left my left hand, so uh, I can hit keys with the nub. I guess is what you call it, uh, one at a time. But you know, like a lot of the things, like you'll be holding W to move forward, and then you'll use like your index finger to hit something else. I, uh, I you know, I can't do that, so I have to figure out creative ways to work around that that little disadvantage stuff all right so obviously uh, if you guys aren't aware elto is now playing a healer so one more question for elto then we're going to talk about all this um you, you said you started playing like a hunter and w when did you actually start raiding like serious heroic progression as a healer what tier and when like was it immediately a challenge for you or had you already figured out what you needed to surpass that challenge um, I started raiding, like, trying to raid for first real, um, around the beginning of, uh, Wrath. I decided that's when I was going to try to do. I, I, I was pretty sure that I could do it, but it was just one of those things that I, you know, I needed to, to test, you know, to see for myself. I needed to keep, you know, trying it. And, um, uh, I mean, I had to go into, like, a really, really low-level guild and, 
just, I mean, it was it was pretty bad. Uh, they, I really just uh, kind of knew most of the, for most part, like how to do everything, but uh, just basically the the idea of raiding, I didn't understand completely, uh, like mechanics wise, how the whole system was going to work. All right, great, great topic that you bring up there at the end. We'll talk about it in a bit. And one more final question I just popped into my head here. When you joined our guild, right, which was like pretty much towards the last third of ICC progression, like where were you in terms of playing the game at that point? Had you already felt like you had mastered everything you needed or were you still learning? Uh, I was terrified whenever I joined y'all's guild. But I mean, I'll be honest, I was terrified. I was going... God, please do not mess up because I remember y'all, I got invite, like I got the guild invite and literally expected to be on the bench, but it just so happened that they needed a holy paladin, paladin healer right then and there. And I had to go in like immediately. So that was basically like, oh my God, I've, I've done nothing but I haven't, I haven't even seen this boss yet. I haven't seen any of this. I'm not expecting to, you know, know what to do. And, uh, man, it was, uh, it was, it was pretty intense, but I think I did an okay job. Yeah, I remember that. I think it might have been Heroic Rot Face. That was the first boss we had to hit on. But, um, anyway, let's, let's open this up now. So, uh, Mione, how do you feel like, you know, you, you've listened to this, you know Elto, you know how well he plays. If you were to, to sit here and say, like, can you believe this is basically the question I'm trying to ask. You know, can you fathom playing without a hand? How would this work for you? Well, you know, I, I play a Resto Druid and I've played a, a Holy Paladin before and in Wrath. And I know how, I don't know, it just, I, I don't know how you would do it. Because, you know, I, I use WASD, you know, you, you know, use the mouse to, to, you know, to look around and then you've got your buttons on here. So, like... I don't know. I mean, I'm using a Razor Naga right now, which is like got all of these buttons on the side, which I can bind to to anything I want. Which I guess I don't know. Did did you have this sort of? Did you have a mouse like this back then, or did you literally use like? I, I don't know. I'm I'm confounded how you would even start to learn how to do it with one hand. Like if somebody said, right, I'm going to tie your hand behind your back. Now go and heal, like, Siege or something. I'd be like, well, how would I do it? I'd be clicking around. I'd be like, I'd probably have to put uh, click to move on or something. And I'd be running into mechanics. So I, I don't know. It, it's hard for me to visualize that. Yeah, it's... <laughs> but one of the interesting things is, uh, you know, one time I actually did break my only hand. And that was... A complete, like, I, I realized immediately then, like, everything that I was able to do was completely gone. Like, I couldn't do the most basic things. Uh, and, I mean, I don't know, man. It's, it's really, um, it's, it's really just something, you know, I've, I've grown up with all my life and I learned, you know, I don't know anything different. I think one of the best, uh, examples, like, that I can give people is, you know, like, if you gave me a hand right now, it would be the same as you losing a hand because I wouldn't know what to do with it. I would probably still do the same things I do today or try to. So. Okay. And now, Sai, how do you feel about the whole situation? Like, if, if you lost a hand today, what would have to change for you to still be able to play the game the way you do? I'd be, like, completely screwed. I mean, I play a paladin as well, and I use, like, my nagger, I use my keyboard, like, without one of them, I'd have no idea. I'd, I'd be shit. For, for a while, like, I thought Elto, like, the whole Elto only having one hand thing was just a troll, because I know the guild has a lot of, like, running jokes and stuff, and I just thought it was one of those, one of those running jokes, and it took me a long time before I actually realized, like, wow, he, he actually plays with one hand. <laughs> it's not, I mean, it, yeah. like I said, it, it's definitely, it's hard to believe, honestly, and and from my experience, uh, my left hand is pretty much all utility. Like every ability I have is is left left handed utility, lay on hands, bubble, you know where beacon goes, all that stuff. So all right handing is healing anyway. So without that, I would just I wouldn't be a paladin. You know what I mean? I wouldn't be able to put 
blessings on people. It would be it would be so bizarre. So uh, next next topic we're going to talk about here is basically what like maybe hardware or more specifically software that you needed to implement into your video game to be able to compensate. Like, like, especially like I just said, like, I don't, I wouldn't know how many keybinds I would have available with just one hand. I don't know how you do it. So do you have any special, like, like a foot pedal or something crazy like that, that you use to, to play the game right now? Actually, yeah. Uh, you brought up the Razer Naga and uh, I didn't, I didn't always use that, but I got it probably about a, a year ago. Um, like we were into Kata and stuff like that. Um, and, uh, I, I yeah, that's helped tremendously, especially with like new tiers coming or new, uh, expansions coming out and new spells and everything. And I mean, it's, you know, it really, really helps out. Um, also like a while back, I got two new things. I got, uh, basically got a keyboard that has like, uh, buttons on the side. Uh, really tough to explain, I guess, but, uh, it's just five, five side buttons that are just not really anything to do with the rest of the keys. They're basically like, uh, shift. They, they basically count as shift and something else because I can't hit shift plus one. Like a lot of people tend to keybind and stuff like that. So it automatically like counts for that. Um, and then, uh, actually for Christmas, uh, not this past year, but the year before, uh, a former guildie actually bought me a, uh, a pedal device that I could add in. And, uh, it's been a little tough, like, you know, adding that into my, uh, my muscle movement, I guess, but it's, it's definitely a, a unique and, and helpful thing. All right, yeah, so you brought up a really... I haven't even thought about this. No modifiers. You can't use Shift, Control, or Alt, can you? No, not at all, man. Yeah, okay. So so let's let's talk about that topic. Siler, how many abilities do you rely on that one of those three modifiers for? How would you deal with it if you could not... Even if you still had both hands, but if for some reason you could not use Shift, Control, or Alt, how would that affect your game? That's what I don't understand. Like, I use... Hold on, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I use like maybe twelve keys on my keyboard. Shift half of them as well. And then I've got my Naga, which I use like nine keys on, and then I shift some of those as well. And then I've got Alt, uh, alt for um, like Vent, and uh, I need to consistently be jumping as well. So <laughs> there's no way. There's not a chance. Like, I don't know how I'd, I'd be able to play. I'd have to use like my full keyboard if I couldn't use like Shift or Alt. Yeah, that's a good point. The jumping is, is pretty key, honestly. I hadn't thought about that, Alto. What's it like to not be able to jump? It's really one of the most uh, annoying parts about this. Like that, that is that is really bad. Um, basically, what I'll have to do is I'll have to like. I mean, it's still space bar, but I have to like pull my nub arm off the keyboard and like while I'm holding forward, you know, with the mouse and. Uh, and and jump. I have to come up with creative ways to try to get like a quick jump uh out before, you know. I I mean, that's what we call like when I used to like accidentally bop the tanks and stuff like that because I would be fat nubbing a a key trying to move around too quickly. Uh but yeah, man, that and the whenever I saw C Silo all the time like you'll move back and forth really quick by hitting like A and D like rapidly. That's one of those things I've always wanted to be able to do. And I've, uh, you know, y'all just constantly rub it in my face all the time. So thanks for that, guys. Damn, yeah. I had not even considered, like, those are things that going into this, I had not even thought about. Mioni, how do you feel? Especially no shift modifiers, no jumping, no rapid presses of, of any of those small keys. How would you adapt to that? Well, firstly, I can't imagine how you would even do Thaddeus, for example, you know, where you have to jump the ravine over to him. I think it's Thaddeus and Nax. And, you know, in Stormstout Brewery Heroic, for example, where there's the, the two, um, like, piss waves that you have to jump over. I can't think of a better way to describe them. Like, stuff like that you take for granted. Like, I didn't even think about a space bar. But as regards to shift modifiers as a healer, like, it, it goes without saying you have everything you know there there are far too many buttons for one hand to to do on its own i like 
at least in my opinion like i can imagine i don't know you you have to you'd have to rely on so many i don't know the skill level just raises in my opinion like i i, I can't do anything but respect someone in that situation because i can't I can't live without my shift modifiers or, or, you know, anything like that. I mean, how do you... Like, another question that Sila brought up is, like, especially talking on Vent as well, like, communication is a huge part of this as well. So do you have that bound to a Naga button or do you have that on the side of your keyboard? Like, how do you do all the mechanics, heal and communicate with people when you need to do certain, you know, heals or, you know, when you're using a cooldown or... That's my question. Well, first off, it starts with me being pretty awesome, you know, like, that's kind of, like, goes without saying, but, uh, other than that, <laughs> um, I, but yeah, I do use the Naga for the, the, uh, vent keybind. I, I use the middle click button. Um, it's basically pr probably for me the easiest one to, to handle, uh, you know, like, basically that. I mean, I feel like that's a really important thing for me to be able to have access to at all times, you know, like I, so I tried to put it in a pretty predominant spot, I guess. Yeah, I, I think I know a few other people who use that button, but to me, the middle mouse button is my, like, most reactive key, so I wouldn't be able to do that. Now, um, I use alt for, uh, for talking invent, which obviously is one of the modifiers. So, same thing goes for that. Like, um, what what button do you use, Sai? I use Alt as well. It's just, I don't know, I've always got used to my finger, my thumb being on jump. Like, I'm always jumping anyway, so I'll just switch to pressing Alt to speak kind of thing. It's right. just easy. And what about you, Mione? Uh, I use, like, the numpad minus button for some particular reason. It got stuck in my head because uh, I tried using Alt and something on an add-on was not working, so I changed it. Um, are we going to mention, like, the the screenshot he's given here of his UI? Because that, I don't know, like, is that the next Yeah, that's or... next. That's next up. Absolutely, yeah. Awesome. Cool. So, yeah, we'll, we'll get right into it then. Um, now, as we already talked about hardware, let's talk about, like, software and add-ons and stuff like that now. We're going to use this to segue into a very, very important topic that everyone out there as gamers needs to understand. But first, let's talk about Elto's UI. All right, so... Hopefully on the screen, you'll see exactly what he's playing with. And it's really not that complicated, but can you go uh, just a bit in depth about everything, you know, where it's placed, why it's placed there, maybe add-ons you use to raid, anything that you need, you feel that is specific to your needs, not necessarily just out of the box default and why it's that way. Uh, yeah. Um, well, basically I have, uh, I, I use a couple add-ons, uh, I try to, you know, keep things like in, uh, pop up, you know, right in my face kind of things. I mean, I know most people do that, but, um, there's certain things that, uh, are not really key bound. I don't know if you can tell in a, uh, very easy to hit fashion or, or spot. Um, so some of them I need reaction, uh, like, I, most people use weak R's and I'll probably try to switch to that soon, but I started using uh, Tell Me When and uh, it alerts me to a lot of things going on um, and basically how I can, uh, you know, I need to hit this button that's kind of far off the keys, you know, my normal keybinds. Uh, that and, uh, I mean, I just use Domino's uh, for the, you know, uh, the raid, I mean, not the raid frames, the... Uh, the keybinds and uh yeah man that dbm uh got scott over there that's that's really overall basically uh basically what i use all right so there's nothing that's like is is there an add-on set that you feel like if you did not have it would not be possible for you to play the way you do um I mean, really, all of them together, like work, work together as one, like kind of that really just makes it, it makes it really uh, like that for me. I mean, uh, the problem was is that back in back in vanilla, I 
basically kind of had to focus on, I didn't even know what an add-on was. Like I, I basically soloed everything, you know, just kind of went my own way. And, um, I mean, I was content with the, the standard UI for the longest time, had to really, uh, really, uh, learn the, the hard way, uh, everything. Um, I don't know, man. Uh, sometimes it feels like there could be other things that I could add that would help out, but mostly it's key binds that are, and, and macros that are, that are the most helpful. I, I don't think I could do things, um, if I didn't properly, properly macro the way I do. Yeah, and, yeah, and, and as I've as said, this is, is a huge, huge segue. segue. So let's talk now. Uh, we'll ask Mioni, you know, exactly. Do you, do you feel like there's add-ons that you use that make it so much easier to do your job that if you remove them, it wouldn't matter if you had like 10 hands, it'd still be impossible? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, there are certain add-ons I think are like, obviously fundamental to raiding. I uh, I would fail miserably without them. Mainly DBM, deadly boss mods. And the reason I say that is because as a healer you're focused on healing people and moving out of things at the same time. Looking at timers, like it, it helps to just look now and again and see something. If you didn't have that, you wouldn't have like no way of telling if it was like a, a meteor coming towards you or if you're about to stand in somewhere that's gonna explode. You know, you'd be you'd be dying all the time. I mean, obviously, like communication on on vent and stuff like that, it, you know, is a way around that. But at the same time, I don't know. I, I couldn't live without DBM. Not now, anyway. I'm I'm so used to using it that I, I'm. So, I suppose that Elto is so used to not using stuff like that. You know, he, I don't know. But uh, I look at his UI anyway, and I see, you know. The key thing here is simplicity, and I completely respect that because I can imagine for someone in your situation, like when a new expansion comes out, for example, or a patch that breaks a lot of, you know, big add-ons and things, you're not really going to have that problem. And that's kind of key because as soon as, like you say, you're, you're really dependent on the whole thing as a package, if your UI breaks, I mean, are you, are you screwed? Like, how, how badly screwed are you? What's the setup time? Um, for you that's my, my question to you really yeah that's that's actually exactly why i do that, that. i mean uh every single expansion or patch or whatever it, it does that and i know a lot of people that they kind of i mean they're waiting all the time for them you know the new releases their their you know quality of play go down, goes down for a bit and stuff because you know i mean i understand it's it's you you're totally dependent on it but uh i mean it's it's something that uh it it really will break me you know what i mean like if i'm suddenly like trying to figure out everything else i i you know it's uh, or refigure out everything it's it's it uh it could really mess with me a lot so that's definitely where i was going with this with the simplistic uh sort of ui yeah it makes use... complete sense oh go ahead sorry, sorry. do you use do you grid, use grid and click just, just curiosity, curiosity really, really from a healer perspective like, like how, how, do how do you heal do you people heal do you have, have to have use to like use target like macros, macros or do you, or you actually click on the, the individual to heal, heal them uh it's i use standard raid frames man standard raid frames i'm so God, used to it now. Harsh. i can't imagine that i really can't because yeah, it's like it's your mouse would have to move all the way to the left right or i guess you can reposition them but yeah, I wish the uh, I wish the screenshot showed uh, the the where I have the ray frames, but actually I have all the little uh, the ray frames like directly below, like where my my little holy shock and uh, judgment icon are. Like it all sits right neatly in the middle of that, like on top of uh, my my keybinds and stuff. And I will you know move around, click on the different names and stuff. And uh, I don't know, as, as, like I said, I, it's unfortunate because I I'm pretty sure grid and and everything that everybody else uses would be beneficial to me um like as far as you know helpful and streamlining everything but i'm just so used to i try to set up grid and i was literally spending the entire time trying to make it exactly like the standard frames because we were in the middle of uh of mogushan heroic progression and i was trying to do this and, and it was just screwing with everything like i i was missing all kinds of stuff yeah, so I, I completely agree with, with what you just said there. I mean, 
Simplicity is very important. And up until recently, I pretty much did not use like literally almost no add-ons. Um, you you got to have click through as a healer. I don't know how you do it without it, Alto. But if if you have to actually target and then cast a spell, I feel like that's horribly inefficient. But hey, you you're doing a great job, so no big deal. Um, now I got a specific question here for Siler because if you guys don't know, he's already created his own add-on pack uh, known by Psy UI, and it's actually a very nice looking, well-rounded place. So. Um, how much of that side do you feel is is really mandatory for the way you play the game in that UI pack? Most of the stuff in that UI is like stuff that I've used for the longest time, especially when I stream and things like that. Like DBM is a huge factor because I'm as bad as it is to say, I'm always quickly glanc uh, glancing over to my side monitor to check chat and then looking back, and DBM helps with like the you know, countdown five, four, and I'm like, okay, I need to look back now. Okay, I'm gonna die to this. Um, add-ons like Raven, which show trinket procs. Like without those, I find it really difficult to like look up to the top right of my screen to look at my buffs because so, you know I play an enhanced shaman, so tracking trinket procs is huge. Like if I I don't have my trinkets when I'm bursting, it's I'm gonna do noob DPS. So like I would say about fifty percent of my UI is is key for me and when new patches come out and half of it's not working it's like oh god this is gonna be painful yeah it's pretty rough um and, and i completely agree like the things we rely on as players and as humans with two hands like i said you know what i mean these are big adjustments to make both in game and out of game so um we're gonna now the next topic we want to talk about here is basically like this but on a higher level and especially with alto here I feel like there's some good discussion to be had. So um, another person we were considering having on, uh, he actually does PvP with, with one hand, essentially. Um, have you ever done PvP, Alto? And do you feel like like maybe instead of doing like, you know, hardcore rating, do you feel like like serious hardcore PvP would just be like a lot more difficult for you? Or you think you'd still be able to do it pretty well? Uh, I actually did used to do PvP. Um... In BC, I was a uh, played Shadow Priest, um, and I, I don't know, man. Uh, so it it seems like there's a lot, a, a lot of things that uh, I guess you're expected to be able to bring out. You know, th those spells that you never really need in a normal, you know, scenario. Kinda, you're supposed to bring out, and a lot of PvP is is. A lot of juking, timing, like, that's one of them things that, uh, you know, I, I think I could do it, I, I could, but, man, it'd be really difficult to, it'd take a long time of, uh, to, to, to get it down really well, and I'm not sure quite how, uh, high a level I could get to where, where my bar would be for, uh, for skill. Yeah, here's a question then, so, do you have something to stop a cast, or, or no, not currently? Uh, it's literally move forward or jump or, uh, like, I mean, I, I'll try to hit escape. Uh, I, I just recently put, started playing a little shaman and like, I realized with lightning bolt, uh, I had to macro, uh, wind shear to, to stop cast, you know, and, and cast wind shear basically at the same time. I, I realized that was very important. Yeah. Yeah. I agree, yeah, with, I agree that. with that. Um, it is definitely, especially like now that we've just finished stock progression a while back, uh, it made it pretty obvious to me that, especially in PvP, obviously it's even more so, but if you don't have full control of your character in some cases, it's pretty difficult, and I, I just can't imagine how I would do it. Um, so, Sai, how do you feel, like, if, basically, if you had some one of these types of disadvantages, like, do you feel PvP would just be undoable for you, or do you think you would find a way to work around it and still be good? I mean, it's hard to say, like, if I was to just, like, you know, uh, touch wood, it doesn't happen, but if I was to be in an accident right now and I'd lose, you know, like, an arm or something, I think it, it'd be really, really difficult to, like, adapt to it, but I guess if, you, you know, you start off with it, I guess it'd be a lot easier because, you know, that's all you've known kind of thing. Um, But with the the guests that we're going to get on, you know, I'll give him a bit of a shout-out because we, we couldn't get him on today, Um, Old71, Twitch.tv Old71. Um, he was in an accident, like he had a car crash and lost one of his arms, and it took him a while to adapt. But he's still like a you know a two K rated PvP, which 
might not be Gladiator, but that's still higher than most. I mean, that's, you know, let's be real, that's still, like, higher than most people who play PvP. And he plays with one arm, and what he does is he uses a, a foot pedal. Left and right foot pedal for, like, shift and alt macros. And then everything else is bound to his Nagra, and he's still able to play PvP at a high-end level, which is... I don't know, I find that... You know, I don't know. It's... you got to have... Re- I mean, you got to have respect for it, kind of thing. Yeah, I, I agree entirely. I Mioni, mean, how, how would you feel if suddenly one of these devices was just no longer available to you and you were, you know, especially in, in PvP or even PvE, like, would you, how would you feel about that? Well, from a PvP standpoint, I'm pretty bad at it anyway, but I can imagine, you know, that there's obviously, you know, difficulties, you know. One of, one of the things that I think is most important to sort of emphasize here is, like, what role he is actually playing in any situation not just in pvp you know like would you you know would you have a harder time doing what you do if you were say for instance playing a dk and dpsing you know would you be able to handle tanking for example like is healer did did you choose to play a healer for example without you know meaning anything did you did you choose to play a healer because it was an easier option, say, than than playing a melee DPS moving around all the time, or you know, you can somewhat stay in the same sort of area. You know, like, does that impact how successful you are at, at doing your job? Uh, yeah, that's that's actually a very good point. I mean, and I also want to say, you know, props to to the guy you were uh, mentioning. I, I haven't met him or anything, but that's uh that's a pretty pretty awesome. It's a pretty awesome accomplishment. Um, but yeah, man, uh, melee DPS is probably the toughest one. Tanking, I'm, I, I, I like, I really try to push myself and say that, you know, I can do anything if, if I if I put my mind to it. Now, obviously, uh, Diabolical would say clap here, but you know, um, that's like, you know, that's just one of the things. I mean, I've always been able to just kind of like figure out a way. Um, and, and I, I think if I really put my mind to, well, I really wanted to play a melee DPS or I really wanted a tank or I really wanted a PVP, I think I could do it eventually. Um, it, you know, just be a lot of work and creative kind of, uh, thinking process behind it. Yeah. And I mean, I, I, it, it's just astounding. It really is, especially, like, you know, being born without it is one thing. Like, obviously, Alto's had time to adapt. But if you were to just lose something, like any type of facility that you have currently, I don't know. I mean, I remember Diabolical actually broke his hand, and that was it. Like, he was done. He could not even touch the video game because you're so used to using your hands that if you're, like, a f- one or two fingers are broken, what do you do? You know what I mean? It's just it's just not possible. I don't know. Um, So now let's talk about even more extremes, all right? So we've talked about, you know, missing a hand. There are groups out there. There's a guild that is entirely deaf, all right? Like they recruit players who are hard of hearing or cannot hear. So that means they don't use any voice comms, obviously, right? Like there there wouldn't be point. There wouldn't be a point anyway. Uh, I, I just don't imagine it. I like when I hear this, it sounds foreign to me. How? How, Elto, how would you, like, if you had both hands, but you were deaf, do you think you'd be able to play a video game like this? No. I, I'm on the same boat. I don't understand how they do it. Yeah, what about you, Sai? How do you feel about, like, no vent, no no hearing at all? I mean, look at, like, one thing that makes things like LFR and Flex difficult is the fact that you're in a group with a load of people who aren't speaking to each other like that's what makes it difficult that's it's not because that might be bad or whatever it's just because they're uncoordinated if you told them look all right steve you run over there click that orb like steve would run over there and click the orb but the fact that they're reading heroic reading with no one like actually saying anything i mean i guess they use like typed macros or something but still that's that's crazy like yeah i don't know i wouldn't you wouldn't expect them to be able to achieve what they have Without voice comms, yeah, I rely on it so much. Like, there's a billion times where someone's been like, "Silo, the bombs on you," and I'm like, "Shit, the bombs on me!" You know, and if it wasn't for that, I would have died. Right. And how about Mione? How do you feel if you had no no hearing? Would the game be playable? If if I couldn't hear, I I don't know what I would do. Like, 
it, it's really amazing that there are guilds like that out there. But, you know, pretty much doing anything in this game that's not casual, inverted commas, you know, requires you, oh, log on vent, oh, log on, P you know, uh, Skype for PvP and stuff. What, what, what can you possibly do in the game at that point? I mean, if you can't come on vent and you're hard of hearing, like, or you, you can't hear in this case, like, how do you even get in guilds? How do you get to end game progression? I mean, I, I completely admire people who are able to do that. I, I just don't know. I don't know. It, it wouldn't, I, I just think it turned me off all games, not just WoW. You know what I mean? Like, pretty much you need to, to hear everything. Obviously, subtitles is a thing that adds, you know, a, a fix for that sometimes in most games, you know, most other games. Not all games, but most other. But in WoW, I mean, like Sila said, you would have to, I can imagine at least, like, they'd have a macro or they'd, they'd discuss, you know, via guild chat or whatever or various chats um, split off what they were doing on each attempt or something that, you know, Mike goes and clicks an orb, like we say, or a scumbag Steve, you know, but how do you then react if something goes wrong? Do you then have to do slash raid and type, oh crap, go and do something else? By that time, it's already happened or, or what? I, I just, I don't know. Uh, I, I just don't know how people do it. Yeah, like, look at our guild, whenever the, the event starts like crashing or whatever, it's like the end of the world. It's like, well, fuck, we need to we need to get this back on track, otherwise we can't raid properly. Yeah, in TOT, especially when we were doing progression on um, Li Shen, my god, when the event went down, like, chaos. We, we just couldn't raid. In fact, I think one uh, evening we even called it because event was being DDoSed, and that was it. Like, that, that was our raiding for the night, so... I don't know. And uh, we'll touch on this subject as well, because since we're talking about vent stuff, um, basically, th there's a good a good example of this, right? Where, especially, I mean, 10 man, <laughs> let's not even discuss that. This is not what we're discussing, but with 25 human beings all in the same raid, right? Two examples immediately come to mind. Think about the mechanics on Shaw of Pride, okay? When one of those goes wrong, how? Like the prisons, what? What happens? You know what I mean? It happens all the time. Somebody's like, ah, oh, there's nobody on blue, nobody on blue, nobody on blue. They say it like six times, and then somebody either runs over there or the guy dies. You know what I mean? What do you do in that situation when something goes wrong? I cannot even fathom it. But the other situation is boxes, heroic. The biggest fight, like this was a true test of our guild because the fight wasn't even that difficult, but we were making it so much harder because we had to split up vents, right? We literally put... 15 people in one side and the other 14 or whatever, you know, the rest of the people on the other side. And they had to communicate with each other in that subgroup. And then we had to have someone communicating between both of them. And what it was literally, it was like a psychology experiment. People were just like developing their own like sub personalities because now all of a sudden they're like the leader of this sub, you know what I mean? And when you don't have a vocal leader of a guild, Maybe it's different in smaller groups, but I just, I literally do not see it possible to raid 25 man heroic progression without voice comms. I don't see how it's possible, but I don't know. It's pretty baffling. Now the next, the, the, the other one, maybe, maybe you know more about this than I, I do, Si. I just read the article briefly, but apparently there's a, the people who play blind. Do you have any insight on that, Si? Yeah, um, it was a story that came up a while ago. Basically, as a raider, I think he's in like a top end guild, and how he plays is someone in the guild. I think it's a relative of his, or just someone who was willing to do it. Basically, allows him to go and follow, and that guy acts as like a guide dog. He guides him out of like dangerous mechanics and stuff, and then he does his his job as a, a DPS. And that's crazy to think like he's able to play the game, you know, thanks to someone else. But still, imagine. Not being able to see what you're doing and playing wow. That's fantastic. What? Like, for, for you know, a guild to be in a position where they would allow somebody to go and follow and do stuff like that, let alone, you know, because people on the internet are arseholes, we all know that. You know, but to be in that situation, like, your eye is more than anything. Like, that's fantastic, isn't it? It really is. Yeah, it's a, it's a landscape with with audio and visual cues and if you're missing out on one of those especially visual 
I just I don't know how how it would be even possible. Um, yeah, so also, why don't you explain what you just typed there? That that yeah, seems that like that an seems interesting, like thing, interesting to thing to say. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> my brother, my brother uh, was gonna. I was gonna try to figure out how to get. Uh, I can't play the Wii like a lot of times. Uh, Zelda Skyward Sword is one of the, like the games I really wanted to play, and uh, once I heard about the two. Uh, brothers, like the one of them was blind and the other one was helping him, uh, you know, play play WoW. I got the idea, like, well, why don't why don't I get my brother to be like the shield or you know, like be the uh, the nunchuck as I'm the the Wiimote and uh, basically play through all of Skyward Sword and uh, try to post that on YouTube and just like see us fighting with each other and you know completely uncoordinated unlike the other two brothers uh that you know have been playing wow well for a while and i thought that'd be a pretty pretty interesting thing since i i really can't play it at all uh, that would honestly yeah, that would make honestly... an awesome series even if you just artificially like put the the difficulty in place like say i was like i was blindfolded and siler was like deaf and we had to play through a game together. How nuts would that be? That'd be insane. It's just, it's baffling to think about. Don't you guys think? It's so baffling. It really is. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, you see those speedruns, like at Speedruns Live, um, which I was watching um, just after Christmas, which is annually. Um, there was actually some competitions, well, not competitions, but like, they people would like donate money to charity and as a result they would increase the difficulty and it got so much to the point where somebody was playing um a game like he would literally use half the controller and the other guy would use the other half of the playstation controller so the other guy was using the the camera and all of the other buttons for that side of it i don't know what it was i think it was a zelda game or something but i can't imagine that and people do dark souls blindfolded runs like how they even get past the first area, I have no idea. But it comes down to people's, you know, like like Elto, you know, he was born this way. He, I suppose if you just keep doing something, you get so good at it. Your memory, you know, th that's all that's necessary, you know. You you can do anything if you if you put your mind at it. But personally, like, it puts, puts me to shame. I, like, if you said, right, okay, try and complete a Final Fantasy game with your foot, you know, like, I, I don't know how we'd even start, you know? I feel, I don't know. I, I just have the utmost respect for anybody who can do that. It's just mind-blowing, again. Yeah, it's it's true. I, I, I have true respect for anybody. Um, the last topic that we want to discuss here is more of like a, I, I would call this a forewarning, all right? Everything you guys have heard here today should make you think. It should really make you appreciate what you've been gifted with birth. You know what I mean? Every one of us has so many gifts, and it's really sad to see when, you know, like somebody is robbed of one of them for no real reason. Obviously, accidents happen, and it's the worst, but just just be thankful for what you have, all right? Because that, that is what it's all about. Um, and what we're talking about now is using what you have to be the best you can. Obviously, Elto is a great, he's a shining example of this. He is using the tools he has to be one of the best players in a 25-man heroic guild. You know what I mean? He is an exceptional player, and there's no question about it. But you just cannot get to that level unless you use your mind to adapt the tools that you have around you. UI, add-ons, macros, keybinds. These things are absolutely mandatory if you're playing this video game and i know there's a lot of people out there you know fans of silers people who are watching podcasts reading up on stuff even people who regularly check mmo champion they don't really understand exactly how important this is so all of us are going to go through just real quick exactly how you know add-ons and macros really shape our lives and i'm going to start right now when i started playing this game I did not have, like, I hardly had any abilities macro. I was not even aware that you could remap keys. So the only keys I had were the ones that were defaulted, right? So literally, I thought the only keys that could be bound were one through zero on the top, right? So obviously, that that's a huge disadvantage. Yet I managed to find a way to tank, like, 40-man bosses. Not very well, 
But looking back at that, all it would have taken was like some learned experience about key binding. And now looking forward, it's it's so much easier. And I'm actually probably going to do a written series on this. But the, the add-on weak auras is like the epitome of what you want as, as an example of this. It will literally do anything you want. And if you're an educated, learned person who knows exactly what their class needs, you can make this add-on literally tell you when to use abilities, when not to use abilities, when trinkets, potions, jade spirit proc, stuff like that. It's gorgeous. It's the best thing ever. So if you're out there playing the video game, my what I'm going to say to you guys right now is take some time with WAD coming up to re- create your character add-ons anything that you could think of talk to people who know what they're talking about and see what type of stuff they're using because without proper add-ons you just cannot play the game at the maximum level that you could reach so now elto since you've we've already talked about your ui if you were to give somebody a message about you know what you, you, know, you, what actually, you actually need, to, need do to do to be able to, to, be stay, able to stay competitive, competitive at, this at this level what would you say what would you say uh, mainly i would say People need to like look at things and take it one step at a time. Focus on one thing. You know, you constantly want to up your game, become a better player. Like, don't don't try to just do it all at once, man. You know, focus on you know. Okay, I want to be a more. I want to use holy shock on cooldown. I want to make sure I'm using it all the time, and it's never you know like I'm never wasting it. I'm not wasting holy power stuff like that, or you know like not wasting combo points with your rogue. You know stuff like that. Focus on one thing and get so good at that, and then say, okay, now I'm gonna wait and make sure I get my trinket box right and everything else. And and that's when it goes back to when you were saying weak ours. That can help a lot with that. That really kind of just you can set it up to put little little uh reminders little notes up there that go okay you have five combo points now you know or hey your your holy power is is max you know use it now you know or i mean things like that you know like uh it's it's really important and, and obviously dbm is is huge um learn macros like they really they really help out Okay, so now, as you said with Siler, he literally has created his own UI package. It's a very good tool. But you, you're like known for making guides and people coming to you for help. If you were to say, you know, all these people constantly come in and they're like asking all the questions about you, your UI and all that, what would you say if there was one unified message that you could tell every single one of those people about how you play the game with the add-ons and stuff and, and what goal you would have? What would it be? Um... I'm I'm gonna do my normal and get sidetracked, but with you mentioning like keybinds and stuff, I clicked from like I I clicked in this game from um, vanilla all the way till ICC, and it was only f like because you know um, for those who don't know him, but Shane Nick, I was meant to be visiting his uh, his house, and he was like, "You're not coming in my house as a uh, a clicker, you you ain't entering. You got to start keybinding." So mid raid. I sat there on the break and keybound all my spells and just went into a boss with keybinds I had never used before. And it was just kind of like, it, it's weird at first, but you just have to keep, you know, practicing and practicing and practicing until you learn. Because it's all muscle memory. Everything in this game is just timing. Like, I played my rat so long now that I know when Crusader Strike's going to oh, come off cooldown, you know, without looking. Like, I know how many combo points I've got without kind of looking. You know, it's just kind of when you do something that much, you just remember it. It's just like second nature. So if I would say anything to anyone would be set things up how you want them, even if they're different, and then just practice with them and practice with them and practice with them until you you can do it, basically. Okay. And Mioni, same question pretty much. Like, let's let's walk through your progression and where you are now in the game. And if you were to give you know, like one message towards people who are struggling with this type of stuff, how they could maximize their play, what would it be? Um, well, back in the Burning Crusade when I started playing, like, uh, I, I literally, you know, clicked and uh, on a warlock and I bound some basic things here and there, but it wasn't really until later on in the expansion or even towards like Raph's early entry, like the, the, the time just before that, that I really started downloading and installing add-ons because I I just didn't know like what they were. You know, a friend of mine introduced me 
into the game and then he quit like a month after I started and I carried on. So I had to learn it all from the start, you know, and I don't know. I think it's just like Silas said, it is muscle memory and it's just about keep doing things and try new things. Don't be afraid of just going, oh, well, I, I'm used to this. I'm doing subpar damage, but if I change something, oh, no, my DPS will go. Down. No, no, no. Try everything. Seriously, like unbind everything, go back in your spell book and then put it somewhere that you can easily access. And like you shift modifiers because they are godlike. I never used to. And when I started using them, well, my healing improved like 50% and everything else did as well. And uh, I don't know, really. I think the other thing I want to mention about add-ons is like how important they are. It's it's all from, you know, the reason add-ons are at the point they are now is because of how important the game is. And that doesn't just have an effect on World of Warcraft. Games like Rift and other games, you know, in, in the MMO sort of scene, you know, they're all allowing, well, most of them, apart from Elder Scrolls apparently, is allowing for, like, add-on development. And a lot of people take stuff like DBM and they go, oh, that's a great idea. And then it comes to another game and they, they put that in and suddenly more people can play and enjoy the game. So I think World of Warcraft itself and the community is down to what has allowed us to be at a point where people of all different, you know, disadvantages can have an equal-ish footing now, you know? So, I don't know. The best advice is to keep trying, though, and if you suck at something, keep trying and try again. So, I don't know. Sam Cost just texted me on his thoughts on the matter about add-ons, and he said, um, the, the shit, so... Yeah, he said, I don't like it. The shit. <laughs> don't, don't like it. <laughs> yeah, but no, I mean, that's what it's all about. It's all about getting comfortable... And like I said, with the new expansion coming out, this is the time, especially now if if you guys are out there and you're not already doing like heroic progression or high end PVP, then why don't you start? You know what I mean? This is what the game's all about. And anybody who defeats themselves and say like, ah, I'm a noob, I'm clicker, I can't. I got people in my guild who are some of the best players ever and they click. And it's not about the fucking key binds. It's about knowing what you're doing having the right setup on the screen at the right time so everything else falls into place. And it's really, it's it's you just got to take the initiative and set it up. It won't take more than a day to set everything up and then you just get used to it. As Siler said, just set one thing up and practice with it over time. We got plenty of time to do that. But I don't know. That That's pretty much it for the topic. Now, I, I think we have some questions. Do we, do we still have some questions coming inside? Um, there was only a couple, but just to re- uh, reiterate... Wait, so the, the, look at what you know what I'm on about. Just to go back Real to... Real elephant, yeah. right? The, yeah, Steve's. Um, I've noticed that a lot. Like, a lot of people put themselves down straight away. Like, oh, yeah, I wish I was good at this game. But this game isn't, like, a hard game. It's not where it's, like... I don't know. The whole game is just practice, really. Like, I wouldn't say there's anything in this game that's really difficult. It's just all about learning what you need to do and taking the time like some people be like oh i'm that bad at this game but they'll be sat there with no like gems or enchants and it's like well it's because you're not putting in the effort you know you need to just sit there and spend an hour if you're a dps and your dps is like read a guide and sit there for an hour just whacking the dummy until you you perfect your rotation so just to go back to that topic yeah, you know, of... one more thing then I'll, I'll elaborate on it's like uh the, the way i've always equated it is Think about when you're in like grade school and stuff like that, and you get to use a calculator in math. You know what I mean? That is the ultimate, like, you have the tool in front of you that makes you a better person with math. I don't know what you, mathematician, I guess, you know? It's like people don't use the tools they have, and that's what this whole thing should be about. Literally, people are born without hands, people are in accidents, they're blind, like, and these people are playing the game at a high level. How embarrassing. That that embarrasses me. You know what I mean? There are people out there who are blind that are playing the game at a better level than I am. That makes me immediately sit down and think, fuck this. I want to get better at this game because I am squandering God-given gifts. You know what I mean? Because I'm just too lazy to set something up. And that's that should inspire. That should be inspired in everyone. You have the tools in front of you, just like a calculator. You're not going to do math without a calculator, are you? You shouldn't try to play World of Warcraft without proper add-ons, key binds, stuff like that. And we are all here more than happy to help you guys. So if anybody listening to this has any questions, just let us know. But 
any other closing comments about this topic before we maybe answer a few questions? No, that's about it. Most of the questions are kind of like repeats on what we've covered, so I'll go through them just so the people who can ask, uh, ask them get kind of like a acknowledgement. But Megadeth973 asks, um, generally what I want to know, does he use his keyboard at all during the fights, or is it only his mouse, like, an, like does he have a Naga? Uh, yeah, I actually do use my keyboard. I can hit, um, like I was saying earlier, I can hit um, with with my nub arm, which, I mean, I, there's not literally a picture or way for you to see it, but it's pretty, it's pretty fat. Like, it's, it's a big, I mean, it's a big arm, you know, it's not like a finger compared, you know, like, so, I mean, but I can hit one key at a time, um, but sometimes, every once in a while, when I'm trying to move really rapidly, I'll, I'll hit a, uh, random, a, a key that I wasn't intending to, like, you know, like, all of a sudden, uh, back, like, back in, I remember we were doing, uh, what was it? I forget who who it was in Firelands. I accidentally like uh bopped the tank at last, you know, at at three percent because I was trying to hurry up and hit lay on hands, and that was right next to it, unfortunately, and uh, basically wiped the raid at three percent on heroic progression, and that was probably my most embarrassing moment as well. So. Yeah, that was Domo Heroic. I remember that. I think it was Sunlight Tanking at the time. It might have been more green, but I just remember them, like, Diabolical's like, who the fuck just bopped the tank? <laughs> you see the boss running around in circles. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was in the room for that. Um, Dumb one eight asks, uh, just wanted to know what we thought about specialeffect.org.uk and whether you think it makes a difference to people. And if you don't know what it is, it's basically like a charity that, you know, specializes in helping disabled gamers, essentially. I mean, I think anything like that is is amazingly helpful. And, I mean, I fully support that. You know, um, especially for people who, you know possibly, you know, lost or, or uh, you know, got a disability, like, later on uh, in their life, you know. Um, uh, a lot of people don't have the support groups and, uh, you know, j- just just people around them to, to to give them the tools they need, you know. You, you were talking about tools earlier, but a lot of people don't have those tools, and I think, you know, organizations like that, I mean, you know, they, they can really be those tools for people to, you know, achieve the potential that, you know, they can, they, they have, they just, they just have nobody to really, you know, get them there or, you know, show them that they can do it. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Like, I guess some people in your position would kind of, or I guess people who, I don't know, I don't know how to word this, but There'd be some people out there who kind of just give up because they think, because they don't have like the extra hand or you know sight or something, they feel they can't do it. And organizers, uh, organizations like that would give them the confidence they need that shows them that they can. You know, right, right. That makes sense. And um, Don one's got another question, which is: Have you tried using a prosthetic hand or like has something along those lines? Has it, has it helped? <laughs> uh, uh, actually, uh, yes. When, uh, oh my god, uh, when I was, when I was eight, um, now, granted, this is a while back, uh, it, but I had a prosthetic hand, uh, I got one, it's rather expensive, and, um, back then, it's not the technology that they have today, I mean, it literally just opened and closed, and, and by eight years old, I knew basically what I was doing, you know, with, with my other arm, with my arm without the, the hand, so, it uh, it basically was just this heavy thing, this heavy machine that was extremely strong, that it was given to an eight year old that I could basically wield like a weapon. And I remember I was in school and I actually got in trouble with it many times. I would hit kids with it. I mean, I'm you know totally awesome now, you know, not not crazy or anything. But back then I was a little I was a little bastard and. Uh, I actually one time ripped my grandmother's earring out of her ear because I clamped down on it and couldn't 
open it back up again. So she's still got this rip down her ear as a constant reminder, don't give, you know, basically weapons to children. <laughs> How about that? Jeez, that is a story and a half right there. That is, <laughs> that is gold, seriously. What the hell? <laughs> and then the final question is from Fixia, which has kind of been covered, but... um. Is it hard? Like, do you find it hard playing well now? Um, occasionally. You know, I feel like one of the funnest things about this for me is, uh, you know, has always been, and, and I mean, it's always been seeing how far I can go, see what I can do. I, 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 like I said earlier, I like to tell myself I can do this. I just have to figure out how to do it. Um, that's why, you know, I, I think, you know, I try to push Metro to let me tank all the time, you know, and just, you know, I'm not, I know I'm not great at it right now, but it's something that I will, I know I will get good at. I know I will be able to do. And, uh, I mean, but I constantly am still brought up with new challenges. And that's part of the, 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 the point of it. You know, it's, it's that the, if these challenges didn't exist, it probably wouldn't be as entertaining for me because it, it's, it's literally me proving to myself that I can do something and, and, rising above and everything else uh you know not to sound conceited or anything but yeah yeah i would i would have one question to elaborate on that would you say that like you fear new so so this is you know with every expansion obviously paladins get a lot of changes healing wise we both play the class i know like going from kata to mop a lot changed like i had to rearrange my ui and stuff a lot because of spells do you like, is that a big, big issue for you when we get maybe a bunch of new spells? Like, do you not know where to put them? Absolutely, dude. I am not kidding. That is every expansion. I am quietly sitting back here just, just basically hoping and praying that my class is not completely just screwed for me. I'm waiting for Blizzard to figure out this one. Basically, like I was talking about the Wii remote, like, I can't without like some some you know without unhooking it and soldering stuff together and whatever i can't, won't be able to play the wii like normally so i'm waiting for blizzard to basically pull out a metaphorical wii mote for my class that i did i choose to play each expansion and just basically screw me and i have to go okay Okay, this is it. This is the bar where you can't like. Okay, you 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 need to figure something else out, or you need to not use this spell ever, or just you know tell Metro, I'm sorry, dude, I can't play this game anymore. Um, my one arm has finally defeated me. So it'd be interesting. I, I try to immediately come up with some situations, but I can't see how they would like the biggest. I think the biggest thing that would make it difficult for me is if there was something that you constantly had to aim to do healing or damage like the barrels the monk the brewmaster barrels to have to aim those might be but you could just keep binded to the naga like it there's really there's a lot of like the the technology we have is is very very crafty around that but any other questions or anything that you guys want to address nope that's all the stream questions and that's not have got not really i mean like you say it technology is a wonderful thing it advances at an alarming rate and it's nowhere near the same game as we used to play you know in, in bc or before and uh yeah there's, there's a lot more like a lot of people may fear it like you say or, or have fears of of stepping up and playing the game maybe because of a disadvantage such as altos but now is the time to do it with you know add-on support like this what could you possibly need extra, really? I have a question for you, actually. Metro. Okay. Uh, what did you think whenever you came back and uh, I was there healing and you found out that I had one arm and that was the other Holy Paladin there? How about that? That is a great question. I like that question. Um, that was a long fucking time ago. I don't remember. Basically, what he's talking about is when I, like, we founded the guild and I had to take, like, a, a few month break in the summer uh, to sort some real life stuff out. And I came back and Elto uh, kind of replaced me. Uh, but obviously, I'm I'm back in the raid. Uh, and we were kind of, like, competing. 
Uh, I don't know. Was it immediately brought up, though? Was was that something that we were talking about in ICC? I feel like it wasn't. Yeah, I don't think anybody was really talking about it. I think it just came up later. And I, I what I'm saying is I never really got your reaction from it. You know, you just kind of like became something and, you know. Yeah, well, I, I would say this. If if you were to tell me, like, if somebody were to join the guild, if if they were to put on their application, I have one hand. I'm I'm telling you the truth, man. I'd have to reconsider the application because it's just it any type of disadvantage like that seems too insurmountable. Like we've had idiots, you know what I mean? There's people who might have half a brain, but if you have like half your actual physical capability, I don't think I would be comfortable with them in the raid. So realistically, if if you know, if if we're gauging my reaction, it's complete and utter disbelief because I literally like I said especially back then, I just don't see how I would ever have been able to play this video game without all the gifts I have, and I still don't use them to the fullest. It's it's pretty obvious, especially now talking about it, but utter disbelief would be my answer to that question. Cool. That's, uh, that's basically what I was going for. Awesome. There you go. We all praise it. So I think uh, that wraps everything up. So I just want to reiterate one more time. This is... Just please don't take things for granted, all right? Every one of us have been gifted with something. Just go out there and use it. If you play the video game, it's never been better. Warlords of Draenor is going to be the best. Exp I promise you. Don't listen to the idiots. It's the best expansion ever. Mop was the best. Warlords is going to be even better. Get out there. Find a raiding guild. There's so many different difficulties now. There's like five five difficulties to raid. There's going to be five man heroics challenge you know challenge modes proving grounds just go do something and if you feel like you're you know like i know a lot of people hang out on the stream and they're like oh i'm just too bad i'm noob i'm i'm 12 it's i'm too young it's not it's not that way at all you just have to push yourself to be able to to overcome what you feel is your biggest downfall especially if elto can do it hopefully this inspires everyone so where do we go from here how do we wrap this up Hashtag see ya. Usually, you usually we sort of like um, go around the room and see if people want to plug stuff and get some you know, finalization, I guess. Do you want to like start Metro? Like where we can find you? Right, so doing? here we go. Metro LOL, Fire Tree, Horde, US, Guild Leader, the Guild that Elto and, and I have been, Siler and all these people have been talking about. Um, Fire Tree, obviously, the name of the Guild's one. Uh, I'll pass that. Ace Games TV, youtube.com slash Ace Games TV is where I'll be uploading pretty much all the, you know, footage that I compile for Warlord, stuff like that, and just Stratix, basically. Um, the forums, the forums. Let's talk about the forums, all right? The Stratix forums. I got to get somewhere in here because this is this is big. I want people to actually communicate there. So if for some reason you actually want to talk to me, let's hit the forums up on the Stratix forums. Sounds good. What about you, Sai? I was just typing this. Um, you can find me, Sila. You know, what's up, guys? Sila here. Uh, YouTube.com forward slash Sai Gamer. Twitch.tv forward slash Sila. If you've got any like questions for me, forums, definitely a place to go. Or Twitter. Twitter.com forward slash Sai Gamer as well. And uh, if you don't know who I am, play mainly melee, Rattan, and Handsome are two main roles in one on Fire Tree um, US. Awesome, awesome. Have you got anything to add, Elto? Like, have you got anything you want to share with people? Or ah, uh, just hey, thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it. You guys are you guys are awesome. So it's really good to have you on, buddy. Like, we're always up for guests. We're trying to get a, a you know the more guests, the the better. It definitely increases the sort of you know the variety of things we can talk about. And this is definitely something that was worthwhile talking about. As for me, my name's Mioni. Um, I do YouTube videos on youtube.com forward slash acegamestv. Currently, um, me and Metro are finishing off a Dark Souls um, playthrough. We're nearly at the end there. It's infuriating. It's hilarious. It's not politically correct. Go watch it. You'll have fun. I'm also starting to get through Lightning Returns, a bit of a playthrough of that. Very bizarre game. Um, so find that there. I write for WoW Stratix. If you didn't know already, um, there's actually an article I put up today, which is consolidated information from the um, the last 
few days actually of the press stuff and some of the new information um, and there'll be more stuff like that. I'm also going to be continuing my Law Warcraft and You series, looking at law characters, uh, especially the ones um, which are going to be a focus of most of the quest attention in Warlords of Draenor. Apart from that, there's lots of Warcraft content and lots of other gubbins. Uh, go actually follow um, me on Twitter as well, because that's the place where you'll see all of uh, the stuff I do, which is at uh, Meoni Ace. And that's about it from me, guys. So thanks to everybody who's joined us today. Thanks, Sai. Thanks, Metro. And definitely thank you, Elto. It's been an absolute pleasure. So uh, until next time, guys. Oh, Sam oh and Sam Koss, who couldn't yeah, be here. Yeah, he couldn't be here today. Unfortunately, uh, he had very important Finnish stuff to do. He did. It's probably way more important than us. He's probably got like a proper job and everything. So until next time. The WoW Stratix Podcast, the official voice of a World of Warcraft Stratix fan site, wow.stratix.com.